Facebook, YouTube, all that's on the World Wide Web. Facebook, YouTube. All right, we're we going got? live. How come you only got part of us? Do what? Oh, there we go. Hey, there we go. Are we live? It says we're live. We're live. We're Memorex. <coughs> we're whatever it tells us we are today. Good evening, everybody. Yep, we just got. We just went online. I seen. I got a notification. Yeah. Waiting for a few people to jump on board with us here this evening. Coffee in the Word. In the evening. We say coffee word in the morning, but we do it in the evening. Uh, yeah. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. That's, hey, uh, that's German for good evening. You, um, you're going to keep on. You're going to get your full vocabulary just filled up. I'm working on it. I tried one for Russian, but I there was no hope for that. Hey, let, let me tell you one on my grandson. No, I... I, I sat there beside of him, and he says, Papa, I can speak two languages. And I said, you can? He said, yes, sir. Which ones? He said, Japanese. And I said, okay. And I said, what's the other one? He said, Spanish. And I said, okay, so that means you can speak three. He said, no, just two. <laughs> Forgot about his own language, didn't he? <laughs> no, just two. Sorry. You're out, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the Japanese. Yeah, just two. Except for, is it hi? Is it hi? Is that yes? Hi? I may be wrong. Anyway, good evening. We got one jumping online with us this afternoon. We figure a few more jump on in a few minutes. We'll get a few announcements, but welcome to Coffee in the Word. This evening, we are getting ready to get started, get into another miracle of Jesus. Oh, amen. And, uh, oh, what, what happened to it? And you did send it to me, right? I did, I did, I did. Uh, we're okay. going to do something a little special tonight, hopefully, if we make oh. it work. And that'll be later. We won't do it right off the bat. But And let me get it prepared anyway. I'd okay. like to get it up there. That you need to. That you need to. Good, 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 good. Guten Morgen. That's good morning. Oh, you got hey, I, I did get you back in time to do, do our uh, little podcast thing here so we we did good brother larry's out there watching good to see you brother larry that's something bad about you you don't see who's watching on that do you don't show them. no no, no it, it just gives you your numbers, your comments comments and numbers it. okay good deal good to see yeah. you out there brother larry i don't know who all else has jumped on board with us there's donnie's on board good to see you brother donnie <clears throat> this fine evening in east tennessee when it's Almost 90 degrees, I guess. I don't know how warm it is, but it's it's fairly warm anyway. <clears throat> but anyhow, doing good, doing good. Uh, we'll get a few announcements out of the way. We'll get a few pray, praise and prayer report requests and praise reports, and we will uh, jump into our lesson tonight. Amen. Trying to see Sister Deborah send us a thing with the events that's happening. We do know... Well, Mine's not going to let me. Can you believe that? Yes, I can. Stupid thing. I didn't say it over there, did I? <laughs> See, it started me all over. Look. Well, why does it do that to you? Because they don't like me. This is what Deborah said. Right, let me see what Deborah said. June the 10th, July the 10th, excuse me, and the 17th at 9.30 to 10.30 in the Fellowship Hall, we are starting our next steps which is our membership class. If you would like to be part of that, let's just come. No, it's not this coming Sunday. This coming is the 4th of July, 3rd of July. It'll be the next Sunday, and uh, we will be taking in members on the 24th. Is that right? 24th. Yes, uh, but if you'd like to be part of this class, well, what it basically boils down to, if you want to join the church, is kind of we kind of go over what we believe and who we are and, and kind of help you get into some next step, getting plugged into the church. But... Um, if you want to, you can register on the Church Center app or you can let me or Brother Jerry know and uh, we will, that way we have enough. Um, Our sister Deborah, she can get you uh, in there too. Material for the class. Yeah. Also, <clears throat> Baptism Sunday, July the 10th. It's a, <coughs> excuse me, it's a twofold baptism we're doing. If you want to do it at the church, we're doing it at the church and we've got some that want to do it at the river. So if you just like to do it at the river, we're going to do it at the church and at the river. So it just depends who we have and what we have. But either way, if you haven't been baptized, you need to be. Amen. You ought to be. 
Anyway, we got uh, Sunday Summer Nights kicking off Vacation Bible School, July the 17th. Uh, it's at 5 o'clock. Uh, let's see, it's Water Wars at the Mount Vale Pavilion. Everyone's welcome, family, friends, food, and fun. Speaking of Vacation Bible School, we have July the 18th through the 22nd as Pandemanium comes to Mount Vale. That's what it says, Vacation Bible School. You do that, and I'm thinking about WWE. He's going to wrestle yeah. in here. Wrestling here. <laughs> Snapping to Slim Jim. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, remember our Vacation Bible School. If you are a Mount Valian and you'd like to help, they'd love to have you as a volunteer to help. Uh, in that aspect so bring your kids bring your grandkids nieces nephews invite your neighbors pick some up at walmart legally and bring them just don't grab a child yeah. uh, get thrown in jail for all that but anyway hopefully you are uh, but anyway invite as many as you can to come out and enjoy vacation bible school with us amen the stupid thing he said uh, what who said that deborah who what i don't know what are you talking about hey sister delete that <laughs> You weren't supposed to hear that. I didn't think that come through. <laughs> oh, Donnie's just Texas against Alabama. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't catch that. There you go. Good deal. But Brother Bobby, good to see you out there. I uh, appreciate the comments there. Um, but we, we have been cooped up in a car with, with each other for the last couple of hours, so we, we're uh, <laughs> we're rare back and ready to go. Yeah, locked and loaded. Yeah. Uh, been at it about all morning, all day. But anyhow, <laughs> oh, uh, let's uh, let's see. We got our announcements that way. Don't forget services Wednesday night. Amen. Hey, for Vacation Bible School, let me throw this in here. If you're from Mount Vale, if you can pass it along, it'd be great. There'll be text and stuff come out or Facebook stuff. We will be having Wednesday night service for those who are not in Bible school or helping in Bible school or participating in Bible school. Or if you come and drop your children or grandchildren off, we're starting service at seven o'clock. You come out and be part of that. Oh, there you go. Church on Wednesday night during VBS. There you go. Parents want to come be part of the service while the kids are in VBS. We'd love to have you. It's a good time. Uh, so, uh, anyhow, we'd love to have you for that. <clears throat> Anything else I'm missing? Sunday morning services, 8.15, 9.30 small groups, 10.30 main, uh, main sanctuary worship, and 6 o'clock evening worship. Amen. So, let's remember that. Hey, we must be doing something right. You know, last few times that we've uh, been over in 815, the power has went out, so we're preaching up a storm over there. Come visit us. Uh, if you don't have a... Uh, preaching uh, the power out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, uh, but anyway. We're doing something right, either way it goes. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we'd like to see you. It's, <clears throat> it's one of those uh, situations where you come as you are. Uh, you don't have to, to get... Uh, you know, uh, a three-piece suit in, on to uh, to come and see us, as Bro Brother Philip says, and uh, just come and, and enjoy and, and uh, uh, just, in, you know, invite whoever you can and, and, and just come and enjoy the, the Lord. Uh, he's uh, uh, he's just wanting to see you in, in his uh, house. That, that's one thing that we all want to make sure that happens no matter what uh the uh, outside world thinks we are an inviting church. We want to see our family here. Amen. Amen. Um, got a few uh, prayer requests. Uh, uh, just uh, to think of a few. Uh, Brother Mark Gillum uh, got a couple of praise reports from him. He, he is off the vent. And I, I think uh, uh, Whitney said that uh, the uh, uh, the doctors and nurses are... are um, saying that he's doing very well for what, what's going on with him. And uh, <coughs> he's uh, cracking some more jokes and, and just having... Uh, being uh, more self. Yeah, yeah, being more as himself. That's right. Um, really, really glad to see that he's doing so well. Uh, continue to pray for uh, baby Jevin. Uh, it's it's good to see that uh, the baby is home and uh, uh, the doctor's give, given him a good prognosis for the rest of his life also. Amen, good deal. Um, remember Donnie there, he's waiting on a transplant. That's right. I remember him. Um, um, my, uh, my, my cousin, uh, the one that you talked to a couple of times on Facebook, uh, that, that uh, rides some motorcycles down there in, in Alabama, she had a motorcycle wreck the other day. And thank the Lord uh, she did not get hurt real bad, but uh, uh, Sister Kim, we're glad that uh, the Lord was watching after you. It's, it's good to see that uh, 
Um, you posted up that uh, that you're all right and didn't break anything. Glad to hear that. Um, uh, I don't Anybody else? <clears throat> there was somebody else too, but I remember our country. Remember our stuff that's going on right now and churches and all that stuff. Yeah. And so we just got to keep fighting and keep praying and praying and fighting. That's right. And uh, that's how we fight our wars is on our knees anyway. So uh, God shows up, does what he wants in his timing, and he's working things out. We had another, I, I know this has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about, but we had another victory, if you will. The Supreme Court ruled that a coach could pray if he wanted to, six to three. That's right. Uh, so he won that case. He he had prayed in the field and got fired, and, but they say he can do it. That's his constitutional right. Amen. So I thank God we got some Supreme Court justices in that place and position who really adhere to the Constitution that we have. Amen. They're not picking favorites or picking sides. They're just reading the Constitution how it was written. They're not trying to be progressive and change it. But anyhow, we'll move on that before I get too political. Yeah, right. And let's remember that. Amen. It was a good time. And let's remember all that that's going on in our country and all that we need, all that's going on in the world. Hey, with all that's happening, I'll say this real quick. We're going to move, but God's still in control. Amen. He's still on the throne. He's still, nothing slips by him. Nothing happens without him knowing. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. Um, uh, one of the uh, fellow pastors uh, I just read here, he's uh, very sick down in uh, Harriman. Uh, we need to pray for him. Uh, don't know what's wrong with him, but uh, just heard from his wife. He is very sick and asking for prayers. Uh, just keep keep him in the church uh, lifted up in prayers, please. All right. Um, so, so let's remember those. Uh, if you got a prayer request, you can send it through here. You can do it through our text messaging system, prayer messaging system, and we'll get it to the prayer teams. Don't forget, Tuesday night also is prayer with Brother uh, Larry Kay. He has his intercessory prayer wheel ministry, or prayer team down there, life group, and they pray. They meet from 5.30 to 7. You can come in any time during that time. The doors are open and pray. Um, so let's remember that. You got Tuesday night also. You got uh, Overcomers. Thursday, you got Letters from God. Wednesday, you got service. Friday, you got war on truth. That's right. <laughs> hey, very if, own pastor. If, so. if, if you ain't watched it, you need need to watch it. Uh, it's it's very informative. Uh, I, I, I hate using the word entertaining because that's that's not the right right word. But it's except uh, when we do it. Uh, the, we <laughs> did it last week, so our pastor's back, so it'll be a lot better. Uh, amen to that. But but what it is is it does give you an enlightening words about uh, the news, uh, where all the other people sugarcoat everything. We we do give you the uh, what is going on in the, in this world, and and we give it to you straight. But we don't we don't try to hide the words that is is needing to be heard by making up these five mile long words. Uh, I didn't mean to hit you there. Well, maybe yeah, I did. Yeah, you did. Don't lie. But <laughs> He's lying already. That right. tries to hide what is really going on in this world. Uh, and, and I think that's what partially is wrong with the media that's out there today is they try to hide what's going on in this world by, by you know, going to the dictionary and finding all these words that people really don't understand what it is. It's you called know? propaganda. It, it, well, you're exactly right. <laughs> but you we'll move right. on before we get too much real. Uh, uh, please and, uh, pray for my nephew Tommy Trout. Tommy okay. Trout, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sure will. Uh -huh. Let's do that. Anybody else? Uh, uh, I can't think of nobody. I know there probably is somebody. Uh, it, you know, uh, we we were coming back a while ago, and I, I didn't mention it to you. We was both on the phone. I need to continue to pray for your mother. Uh, yeah. I, you know, it, it's just on my mind and on my heart. We need to continue to pray That's for her. True. She does need the Lord to touch her. That's a fact. My daddy both, but especially her. But uh, let's do that. Anybody else? Um, I, you know, maybe I get in trouble about this, but, I, you know, th this is probably the best place in the world to ask for forgiveness whenever you, uh, you ask, ask for forgiveness. You need to do it whenever you got to, 
uh, the folks that uh, that are sitting here with you that uh, it's involved. I don't know if I can forgive you or not. Yeah, well, uh, pastors one needs to forgive me or, or maybe He's not Shelley. Over here. Um, <laughs> Shelley probably. You we uh, <laughs> we're about to embark in something that uh, uh, that is going to need everybody's prayers and everybody's. Uh, uh, support and and that's our TV ministry and and we uh, uh, you know we we have been praying about it we we have been uh, uh, basically just night and day and and phone call after phone call back and forth between both of us about trying to make sure that we do the right thing and and it's getting right the right quick. equipment and, and and today we we had enough funds you know with people's donations and and everything and today we we finally have gotten to the point to where we we stepped off into it and we're, we're starting this off and 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 we really need to be praying and making sure that uh, uh, we continue to ask the lord to lead us in this and, and this is a, a, a something that pastors uh uh, had, a had a vision of and, and we've we've gotten into it also and i think that uh, you know the body of, of the church needs to be praying for also and I, I think that that is something that we here on this program also we need to continue to be praying for because we are a part of it that's right it's to reach more people with the truth reach more people with the gospel amen uh, we do it through our social media platforms which we're already up and running in itself and we uh are headed in that direction. So uh, need all the prayers and support and with prayers and finances and everything else. So be, be praying. That's right. Uh, pray for healing for my Mike. She wants us to agree with, with her. And then we'll do that, Sister Deborah. Let's remember him. Anybody else? I don't I think have anybody it. else. Um, you, you know, pray. I usually pray, but you want I, me to pray? I, if you would, because I've got to start loading this this over. You know. Anyway, I'll pray. Let's thank pray. You, Amen. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and grace, Lord. We thank you for your long suffering and kindness, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing here at Mount Vale and all you're doing for your kingdom, Father God. We thank you for the lives you touched and changed, God. We're asking you, God, to continue to move upon these requests. People that need healing, heal them. People that need delivered, deliver. People that need set free, set them free, God. People that need to be saved, save them, Father Lord God. Those that need comfort, bring comfort to them, Father Lord. God, we're asking you to move upon each and every request, God. Continue to move in their lives, continue to heal them, deliver them, and set them free and bring comfort and peace to those who need it, Lord. God, we're asking you to move upon this uh uh, venture that we're stepping out into, this ministry that we're stepping out into, Father God. We need your hand and your guidance and your direction, Father God. We need you to move like never before, Father God. And God, we're asking you, God, right now to continue to move in all our services, continue to move in our churches, God, continue to move upon our pastors, Lord, all our leadership here at the church, Father God, and our pastors that are under us, Father Lord, and the churches that are under us, God, we're asking you to move, Father Lord, upon their behalf, Lord. And we're asking you right now, God, to touch our country, God. Touch our representatives, God. Touch those that are in power and in, in the administration that is set in place, God. The best thing, and we know and you know, that they'd all be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, Lord. We're asking for your saving power to come, God. And God, help us and give us guidance and direction, Father God. And help us in this class today, Father God, as we open your word, God. And God, study and learn from you, God. The Bible says we're that we could all grow and mature in the knowledge and the wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, God. We're seeking your face today, God, above all things. Anoint us, God, as we bring forth your word. God, speak to us and through us, Father God, not to the wisdom of men, but divine power and revelation of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we ask all these things by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus. And everybody shout, Amen. Amen. Anyway, if you got your Bibles, Mark, no, excuse me, Luke chapter 5, verse 12 through 16. As you're turning there, what are we going to do now? No, I'm just kidding. As you're turning there, we're talking about Jesus healing a leper. And we're going to read it first, and then we'll kind of, what? Is this it? Mm, yes. <clears throat> we're going to uh, we're going to show you a little video here in a little bit of it. In just a minute. You ain't hey, getting ahead I, of me. Okay. I got it, I got it silenced. You got it silenced. Okay, yeah, good deal. Good. Um, 
But we're talking about, we've been talking about the miracles that Jesus performed while he was here on the earth. We've talked about him turning water into wine. We talked about him healing the noblemen. We talked about him healing uh, Peter's uh, mother-in-law and those that were many that were sick. We talked about, uh, uh, what was last week? Oh, casting out the demon out of the church in a way in the synagogue. Uh, that wasn't last week, but that was one of the first ones. But we talked about a lot of different healings and, that took place. We talked about the great catch of the fish at, when Jesus told Peter to catch to come off the shore and go out into the deep and cast his net. And, and he did, and he brought back a, a load of uh, fish that he couldn't even handle. He had to call his partners and their nets were about to break. And so today we're talking about the healing of a leper and we're gonna, we're gonna read it. Let's read it and we'll talk about it. And there's a little video clip I want us to see here just in a minute. It said, and it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he charged him to tell no man, but go and shew thyself to thy priest, or to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and the great multitudes came together to hear him and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. You can pick up this same scriptures in Mark and also Matthew tell of the same story of this healing. Let's just look at leprosy just for a moment and then we'll back into this. Leprosy was a very painful and dreaded disease of its time. It probably is still today. We don't hear about it a lot. I remember watching old movies and they had leopard colonies and they even did in that time. Uh, but it was a dreadful disease. Its symptoms ranged from white patches on the skin to running sores to the loss of digits on fingers and toes. For the Hebrews, it was dreaded because it rendered its victims ceremonially unclean. That is, they were unfit to worship God. In Leviticus 13, let's see if I can get it to pull it up like I want it to. It's not going to. Uh, Leviticus 13 and 3. I want us to look because there's very lot of significance in this healing in itself, because it, if they were a leopard, it said, and the priest shall look on the plague of the skin of the flesh, and when the hair of the plague is turned white and the plague of sight be deeper than the skin of flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. The priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. When they were unclean, they could not enter into worship in the house of God anymore. And, that, and you, you think, well, that's not too bad. Yeah, that was a big deal in this day because what if you think you couldn't come and present your sacrifices unto the Lord? And then secondly, anyone who came in contact with the leper was considered unclean also. <clears throat> Therefore, lepers were isolated from the rest of the community so that members of the community could maintain status as their status as worshipers. And the leper leads a very humiliating and lonely life. Uh, Leviticus 13, 45 through 46. And this is, this is a, a version, an NIV version, I think, but it said, let me look at it. I don't really like that version. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I just don't. It's me. I don't, there's a lot of stuff that they leave out and a lot of stuff they took out. Let's see. 13, 45, and 46. I want you to, I want us to see these scriptures tonight. So this, this story will make a more profound impact, if you will, of what Christ really did for this man. It said in the leopard whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent. So he had to look, he had to tear his clothes. His head was to be bare and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry unclean, unclean. What that means is, is when he come close to somebody, he would holler unclean, unclean. That would let them know that he had something wrong with him and they probably could tell as they saw him, but they were not to approach him because I, I, I may be wrong, but leprosy, I think was a, an, an infectious disease. You could catch it from somebody. I may be wrong about that. Something we need to look up, I guess. But the fact of the matter is, you ceremonially, you would be unclean. Ceremonially, you could not go into the temple to wash. So if Jerry had leprosy and I come up, he was, he should heart sell and start. I could tell by his clothes. I could tell by his, his makeup. And if he, is, if he hadn't already started losing things and, and really looking sick, he would holler, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. It means to stay away from him because he was unclean. All the days there and the plague shall be in him shall be defiled. He is unclean and he shall dwell alone without the camp shall his habitation be. And I thought, man, what a thought. And it goes on to, to tell a lot about even what his garment was to look like. And so that people could tell 
and who he that he was a leper and that he was unclean. And what a terrible thought. And I want to just dwell on this a little bit is is that we've got to understand that leprosy was not only a dreaded and terrible disease, it affected the nerve endings, if you will. The disease, uh, let's see, as long as he was infection remains unclean, he must live alone. He must live outside the camp. What a terrible thing to know that, let's say for a husband and a father that had young children, this affected not only old people, it affected just people. What if they? What, what if you couldn't even come in contact with your children? You couldn't hug them. You couldn't touch them. You had to see them from way off in an outside camp, and it would be terrible. That would be a lonely time, and any family members or any contact with anybody that you loved or cared about, you had to live a lonely, and it not only it being a, a dreaded disease, and it was a <clears throat> painful disease, the leprosy was a disease which the Jews supposed to be inflicted for the punishment of some particular sin, but the Bible does not teach that. But it is a, a terrible disease in itself. And this first miracle, or not first miracle, but this miracle had a lot of significant impact upon what was happening here. And we, we see, does it say that it is? Okay, this right here says, leprosy also termed Hansen's disease is a, a chronic infection caused by the bacterium Microbacterium leprae, L-E-P-R-A-E, a a rod-shaped organism that strands reddish uh, when an acid-fast strand is applied. Uh, Historians suggest leprosy was recognized as a disease as early as 600 B.C. because of the disfigurement of individuals with untreated leprosy. People with leprosy have been shunned and isolated for many centuries. Fortunately, uh, currently, multi-drug therapy has reduced leprosy. Now, of course, this this is for for today. And and back then... There was no cure. It was an uncurable disease. There was not not very many uh, things that you could do for it uh, other than try to wipe or clean and they didn't have the knowledge to do that uh the the article prior to this one says uh until i think it was 900 a.d they had nothing other than water and leaves to to put on yeah and so it was an incurable disease you died from it basically a terrible slow painful death in its way you would lose body parts. Your uh, nerve endings would be ended, right? Now, as far as leprosy being contagious, it is mildly contagious. So is it contagious? Yes, but it was not something that yeah. you, you could just handle and, and get. When unless something you it, could just catch it easy, yeah, right? Yeah. It, it's not very easily con- contagious. Uh, but that is in today. You, you have to remember today we, we have m- many more uh uh, you know things going on in our bodies and and things that that we have gotten used to having o- over the the centuries back then there's no telling how contagious it, it would have been right well and that and we have more cleaner sanitary type conditions in itself what with water and and bathing and everything to that nature is a lot different but anyway it, it, it's a terrible disease and i want you to see this and not only was it a terrible disease physically uh, uh, there Go was ahead. one other thing in the Bible it says to leave them alone and everything yeah. this right here is the most important thing that, that, that says okay. you see how many years it says to leave them alone five okay. to ten years right you're supposed to leave some, some some person alone if you find them that has leprosy you're supposed to leave them alone five to ten years right if they survive. If they survive. Yeah. So it's a terrible thing. And it was a terrible thing because they become unclean. And on top of that, spiritually, they could not worship. People, They. I, I think about the loneliness and on top of being a dreaded disease. There you are. You can't have contact with anybody you care about, anybody you love. It, it, we, we don't understand loneliness sometimes. Some people do. Some people have been alone and understand it. And, and on top of that, you have a disease that just eats at your body and eats at the flesh. They would lose toes, they would lose fingers, they would lose sometimes their nose, parts of their nose and things. It was just a flat, it was just terrible because the nerve, it killed the nerve endings and sometimes they would damage stuff they didn't even know they damaged. Correct. So it, it's just a terrible disease and, and and a terrible spiritual thing in itself at that time. And it, it's, I want us to look just at the biggest impact that this thing has. And in verse 12, it said that it came to pass. When he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. And what Luke is portraying here is this guy had it bad. 
he probably had things that the little video we're going to look doesn't show it as bad, but he was probably at some of the final stages of leprosy. He had a, he had it enough, you could tell from a distance what was wrong with him. Mm -hmm. Whether it was digits missing or not, we don't know, but he was full of leprosy. And it besought him, or he besought him. He, he fell, he, he, he seeing Jesus, fell on his face, besought him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now I want to stop right here. We're going to show this little video. And I, we've read the scripture. And the reason I like this video is as I uh, just kind of preempted a little bit to tell you about, a little bit about it. it. Can we tell where it's from and all that? We should, right? Yes. It's, we, 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 it's we off the uh, Chosen app, if you will. There's a, there's a series called Chosen that's being funded, uh, group funded. And, it's, and you can download the app and watch these shows by free. They're episodes about the walk of Christ. And, and they'll tell at the beginning, I'm just going to give you a little heads up. Some of it's chronologically not in order and, and they're tying it. They've Hollywooded it up a little bit to give a good storyline to it. But a lot of it is very accurate in itself about the scriptures and very showing of the personalities or the human side of things that we probably never would think when we read. But we want to show this because it shows the disciples' reaction. It shows Jesus' reaction. It shows the leper's reaction. So we, we want to look at this, and we're going to jump into the Scripture and begin to talk more about what Christ did in, in this mighty miracle. Can I say this about this? It's never too late to ask for God's help. If you get nothing else out of this, it's never too late to ask for God's help. Because leprosy destroys the nerve endings. Lepers often would unknowingly damage. I talked about that toast. This man with leprosy had an advanced case, so he had undoubtedly probably had lost some facial tissues or body tissues in itself. No matter how big your problem is, don't thank God. No matter how long you've dealt with it, don't think it's too late to ask for help. Amen. Can you ready? Okay. Let me, uh... You're trying to pull it up. Jerry's trying to do the... Here it comes. Maybe. <laughs> You're so funny. I try to be. Probably not successful as I'd like, but I try to be. There you go. It's a leopard. Stay back. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his air. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. That's not like Rabbi. You can handle his disease. You can. Mr. Leper, stay back. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his air. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. Rabbi, 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 Rabbi you can't this disease. You Please. Please. Please don't turn away from me. I won't. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Only if you want to, I submit to you. My sister, she was a servant at the wedding. She told me what you can do. I know you can heal me if you are willing.
I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. What can I, what can I ever do? Do not, do not say anything to anyone. You don't seek your own honor? Please just do me this one thing. But what do I tell people? Go, show yourself to the priest. Let them inspect you and see that you are cleansed. Make the proper offering in the temple as Moses commanded. And go on your way. Who has an extra tunic? Just one of you, just one of you. That's enough. Green is definitely your color. Oh. <laughs> Not too shabby. is powerful amen it is powerful and it's, it's still playing a little bit for you guys uh, I'm gonna let it play out I can watch it play in here for them and it's just ending yeah it's remarkable it kind of gives us a visual look of what could have been and what could have happened and I think about that sometimes. And sometimes I'm very visual anyway. And uh, okay, I'm very visual in itself. And when you see that, before we get too far, uh, you know, we, let's let's take care of something here because we we didn't go through everything that we needed to go through to get this this video. Thank you very much to the people that, that produce this program. Pa uh, Pastor Philip turned me on to it. Uh, if you've got time and, and can, please go and, and watch this, this program. Uh, you know, the people that produce this did a, a fantastic job. Uh, the, and uh, I, I think it was uh, King's... Uh, that uh, actually has got it on YouTube right now, and they've got every uh, uh, episode. Thank you guys very much for uh, uh, letting it play through for us. Thank you very much for letting our church uh, watch it. Uh, and that, that's what I wanted to say yeah. because they, they can at any time take it away from us right. and not and let us you can pray. go, just to give them a little uh, credit, you can go and download it if anything you've got. It's called the Chosen app, and you can, and you can watch all the episodes, and they're... They are crowdfunded every so far as I've known. They every they've got two seasons. I don't know if they got three up and running yet, but uh, it's really interesting, especially from the beginning to the end. From I've watched all two seasons so far, and it's it's really interesting. And it's because you see, you, you visually you visually see, and that's what we wanted to show how the leopard probably felt when he come to Jesus, and and uh, I, I think about that, and I wanted to say that because never think that what you're going through is there is no hope or it's too late to talk to Jesus about it. You may have dealt with this for 20 years. It may be something new, whatever you're going through. And it don't have to be as, as powerful as leprosy as itself or as a dreaded disease. But I want you to understand this. If Jesus can heal, heal the leprosy then, he can heal it today. That's I want right. us to understand that. If he healed it, if he healed leprosy then, he, he could heal cancer today. That's right. If he healed leprosy then, he can heal diabetes today. If he healed, God, there's no limitations on God in itself. And I think we got to understand that. I like the insight, if you will, is how the disciples reacted. They reacted like we would have. He's got leprosy. Don't you come no closer. That one dude draw a sword. That was John, James and John. I, he's, he's one of the Johns, if you will. He draw a sword. He's going, don't you come no closer. One of them said, cover your mouth. Don't breathe the air. You know, there's, and they were trying to talk to Jesus and saying, hey, you don't understand. You, you know where you're going. And I think it's so important that we see these uh, the human human part of it, because a lot of us would have reacted that way ourselves. And, and here, here, 
Here's a way to think of it, and I, and I hate bringing this back up again, but just think of how we have been reacting the last two years uh, of, of the virus that, that has, yeah. has been going around to, to COVID. You know, this is the way they reacted to leprosy. And, you know, they had no idea what what caused it or what, what was going on with it. But this is the way we have been reacting to COVID. And God has has miraculously changed things for us now. You know, whether it's to to leave it behind or, or, or just move it out of our lives or whatever you want to call it. We are back and we, we are praising. We, we are lifting each other up. We, we are, are seeking we are seeking the praise and worship again, and we, we are going back towards the. We are going back towards the the altar where we should have never left. But in, in this in this video that we just watched, G Jesus said, "Hey, don't worry about it. You know, I've got this. You guys, put your sword away. Put this put this back in perspective." I'm still the one that can can heal through the Father's powers. You know, just just let me touch him. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You and know, it, you know. Sister Misty says Jesus is our problem solver. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Hey, look real quickly at the significance of this miracle in itself, and it was more than just a healing. Uh, if you, it was a cleansing. He, you know, he, he, the, the guy comes to him and says, if thou will, you can make me clean. And, and I think that's the key to where we have to get in our own lives. If God, if we understand, right. if God, if you will, I know you can do it. If you will, I know it's going to happen. And that, he come to him in that sense. But when Jesus put forth his hand, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. It was more than a miracle, but it was a cleansing. And think about this, there's no greater miracle than God can perform in our lives than to make us clean. Now we know it was a physical cleansing in itself as far as that goes, probably maybe even a spiritual cleansing. There's a lot of times Jesus says, walk, he said, be you made whole. I mean, that's the whole thing. And a lot of times, no greater thing, and this is a great miracle. I'm just, this is a little side note. There's no greater miracle. We want to see miracles like this. I do. I'd love to see people jump up out of wheel, wheelchairs. I'd love to see blinded people see and deaf people hear and lame to walk again and, and cancers fall off and diabetes dry up, if you will, whatever you call it. Diabetes dry up, I don't know. Eradicate it out of people's lives. But the point being is the greatest miracle is the, the cleansing ability of Christ to, to change us from sinners to saints changes from to lost to found to changes from blind to those that can see now the greatest miracle is your salvation having your soul cleansed and this and this miracle in itself was a cleansing miracle and i like what it said and immediately the leprosy departed from him it wasn't small it wasn't just okay three days later it was done right then and you've seen the guy's reaction and and can i say this i, I thought about this for a moment when he was cleansed and it just hit me and it goes to worship and y'all know me, I like to worship and I think sometimes we miss the significance of worship, but nobody had to prompt him to thank God. That's right. <laughs> I'm just saying nobody had to thank him to prompt God. He was getting ready to go tell everybody. One of the scriptures says he does anyway, but he was, there was, he was getting ready to go spread it abroad that Jesus cleansed and healed him. And here's the problem we have. I see him. And here's the problem we have is a lot of times we've been washed by the blood, born again, and we have to have somebody to prompt us to worship God. That's right. Hush my mouth. Uh, so <laughs> I just want that's a little sidebar, a little side note. We shouldn't have to be prompted. We ought to come into the house of God, in our house, in our cars, everywhere, ready and willing to worship God for what he done for us. That's right. You can be healed, and if you're lost and not cleansed, you can still go to hell. But if you've been cleansed by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, then you're going to make it to heaven one day. And what greater miracle is there? I hear people all the time, well, I won't see miracles. You don't see miracles as a young man last Sunday morning, I understand, came to the altar and rededicated his life or gave his heart back to God. That's the greatest miracle that ever happened. That miracle lasts for eternity. A physical miracle only lasts until you die. I'm hushing. Can I move on? 
Read got what one there. Bobby's got. Bobby's got, uh, I think he came to Jesus in faith. Also, uh, he came to faith also. Uh, and he asked what you think. Absolutely. He came to him in faith. He, he either heard of it, saw it, somebody told it. They alluded in the movie that if you catch it, his sister was at Canaan at the water where the water was turned in wine. Right. He said, my sister was at the wedding or my sister was at the ceremony and she saw what you did or heard what you did. Now, whether that's true or not, we don't really know. That's not in the Bible. That's something they Hollywooded up to tie it together, I guess. But it could be somewhere he heard it. Some Somewhere he knew who Jesus was. And, and, and even at that, one of the gospels says there was a, there were a crowd of people around him at one time. And he, he I don't know if he walked away or got away, but... Uh, I'm trying to read it. One of them said, one of the gospels, this, this is in Matthew and Mark. Well, maybe not. This might be a different ones I was looking at, but one of them in, in alluded to that there had been a great crowd at one time. But anyhow, we, okay, I'm sorry. I'm looking at two or three things and shouldn't be. But anyway, we see the significance of it is the cleansing. The basic miracle that God can perform is to make us clean wash our sins away. And this is a great miracle. This man was on his deathbed living a terrible, agonizing, painful, long, drawn out death since alone, separated from everybody he loved. I thought about that. It goes back to COVID in a way. A lot of people died alone during that mess because they separated us, some unbeknownstly and some maybe on purpose. I don't know, but they were separated from those and they, 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 the people who lost family members hated it because they couldn't be there. And the people who died, I'm sure, was a terrible play, way to die is to be by yourself, I would yeah. think. And uh, so, you know, that that's neither here nor there in itself, I guess. You can't change that uh, in itself, but it's a terrible way. And I think it's so important that we understand this, that this miracle that he performed was such a great miracle in itself. Because, and Jerry alluded to it, and it's right, we looked at the people with COVID, we looked at things, people still wear masks, and seems like, and I seen a guy the other day in his car by himself with a mask. Ain't nobody in there. And I can see if there's other people in there, and you felt like you could, get, I could see that maybe if you feel that way. But it wasn't, I seen a lady during COVID one time, during the height of it, walking down the street with a mask, nobody around her. I'm just saying, fear is a terrible thing. Donnie said Jesus healed all incurable diseases in the Bible. Jesus is the healer. Absolutely right. He's the great physician. He's the great healer. He said, by his stripes, we are healed. That's right. So we know he's a healing God. And here's a great example. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too impossible for God. There's nothing too far reaching for God that he cannot do. And it's never too late to come to him with your problem. And, and, and whether it's a physical healing, a mental healing, an emotional healing, or deliverance or anything you got. No, everything is too late to address him. Now, one of the significant, you got anything else no. before I move? No, I'm good. Okay, one of the significant things I want us to look at is, is that he touched him. That was, un that he should have never, ever did that. <laughs> he should have never, ever did that. Verse three says, or not verse three, but uh, verse uh, 13 says, and he put forth his hand and he touched him. In Matthew in 8 and 3, it says, And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Before he ever pronounced him clean, he wrenched down. This man had not been touched for Lord knows how long. And how many know that physical contact is a big thing in our human lives? It is. And, and a lot of people say, well, I don't, I don't like people touching me. Well, you don't like everybody touching you, but you like your wife holding your hand. You like your husband. Touch, you know what I'm saying? We, mm -hmm. we want our loved ones to be able to touch us. But even at that, hey, Sister Krista, even at that, the human touch is so very important in our lives. We don't really realize it and how much we do it. We don't really realize it and how much we need it as humanity. A baby, for instance, they tell a baby that is not held, does not develop as well or as quick and sometimes not as much or as good as one that's held and took care of. That holding a baby makes a difference. What you got? Did you say Matthew 8 and 13? Eight, no, it's uh, Luke 5 and 13 and Matthew 8 and 3. Okay. Are you good? Well, you said, I'm pretty sure you said Matthew 8 and 13 and that didn't coincide with what I oh, had. Oh, I'm sorry. There. Well, that's not what I meant. All right. Can't you read my mind? No, I can't. <sighs> but well, I try and every time I try to read your mind, up in there. I, there's it's somebody else up in there and it's going ding, 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 ding. There's a lot of stuff happening up there. 
Oh, uh, but anyway, so here's the thing is, this is why did he have to do so? Why did he have to touch the leper? Think about it. Jesus could have said, just be healed. Jesus could have, Jesus could have said, be healed. Or not even bread his hand out. He could have spoke it. We talked about it. What was it? He healed the nobleman's son or nobleman's, I can't remember what it was, servant. And That's he didn't right. even go to his house. He just said, okay, he's healed. And he said, when, when did he get healed? He said, the hour he spoke it. When Jesus touched the leopard, he was still not healed. He was still a leopard. That's right. The leopard was healed when Jesus spoke the words, be clean or be healed or be cleansed. Jesus did not touch the leopard to heal him. Think about it. He touched it to show him his acceptance of a man who felt rejected. Mark's gospel says this in uh, Mark 1. Verse 41. <laughs> 40, 41. No, it had to go this way for y'all. 41. And Jesus moved with compassion. Moved with compassion. I think that's an important thing that we see. He mentions is that he was filled with compassion towards this man. Moved with compassion. If you see the, the, the video, it really showed a lot, I think, and that actor did a great job of the compassion. He even got down where he was at. I want you to understand God has compassion on his people. God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. What greater compassion could there be? And you see it a lot of times in the scripture, Jesus had compassion on them. One time he says, they were without a shepherd. He said, I have compassion. He told Israel, he said, if you would have out of love to brought you in like a hen brings her chicks in. That's right. Jesus has compassion. He has compassion on the down and out. He has compassion on the poor. He has compassion on those that... It, that long and seek him, but he wretched down because he had compassion on this man, this man who felt rejected by people. Think about this, who was to be rejected by people. Jesus rushed out and touched him. Can I tell you this? He wants to do the same for us. In a society that rejects everything and even rejects God today, he still wants to reach down and touch them. If they'll allow it. He still wants to reach down and be part of it. But touching the leper... Jesus, who would have made himself ceremonially unclean. The touching of the leper is very symbolic of how Jesus would rescue us from our sins by taking our sins upon himself and making himself unclean for our sakes. Good gravy, that'll preach right there. Yes, sir. That'll preach right there. Uh, Second Corinthians 5 and 21. 5. Verse 21. I'm going to pick it, Jerry, all night. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This messes people up. He said, no way could the spotless lamb of God be made sin, but it says it right there. He hath made us sin. He, he, for he that made him to be sin for us who know no sin, that, he might, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And it shows that in this little, just this little passage, if you will, it shows how Christ had compassion upon this man and how, with the significance of him touching him, it was almost symbolic in itself of how Jesus would touch us in the pits of our sin, in the darkness of our depravity. He would reach down, pull us up out of the miry clay, set our feet on a solid rock. My goodness, what a thought. What a thought in itself that Jesus had such compassion a man he should not have touched. A man he should not even become close enough with him as he did. Touches him and then says, I, I think about that. If you've ever been rejected, that's a terrible, painful heartache, if you will. Yeah. And if you've ever been alone, and you're, they're being rejected by society. The whole society rejected him. It wasn't just like an individual. Anytime he walked through an area, he probably didn't go to town. He was not allowed to go into towns. He was not allowed to go into cities. If it was for us today, he couldn't go to Walmart. He couldn't go to the mall. He couldn't go downtown. He couldn't go anywhere. He had to be pushed out. He couldn't be in the suburbs. He couldn't be in his own house. He had to be gone. He had to be out, out away from the people, out away from everywhere. And live this terrible life, terrible disease racking his body anyway. And now he's alone. But Jesus, in his great compassion, said, not today, not no more. I want to touch you. I want you to feel that you're not alone, that you're not rejected. And God is telling us today that if we'll, if we'll come to him, just like, like Brother Bobby said, in faith, asking Christ. He, he, he had faith. He says, if you, if you will, I know you can. He said that he said, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. 
If thou will, thou can save me. If thou will, thou can heal me. If thou will, they can. Uh oh, what happened here? What happened there? Man? Oh. Oh. We, we understand this in itself that he is a healing God and he is a restoring God and he is a God full of love and compassion and long suffering and caring. I was talking to somebody the other day and somebody said, I don't know why God ain't come back. I said, my only thought is I don't either, but the only thing I got is, is because he is a long suffering and compassionate God. Those right now who are cursing him, those right now who are saying God hates us and Christianity hates us and religion hates us, the same God is still reaching out the hand. There's a passage in Isaiah, I may be wrong, but it's one of the scriptures and it begins to tell a list and it says, even in your hard times, even when you're away from me, even when you're sinning against me, even when you've turned your back against me, this ain't pervadum, pervadum, pervadum or vadum? Verbatim. Verbatim, not even close. But verbatim, I knew it had a beta in it. But it was verbatim. This ain't verbatim. This is just, uh, uh, you know, just roughly what it's the, the gist of it. He said, even at that, he says, my hand is still outstretched. It's reaching for you. All you got to do is grab it. And Jesus is reaching for people today. If we'll just grab a hold of it. He's he's reaching to give us our miracles. He's reaching to give us our, 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 our desires, if you will. He's reaching, first of all, to cleanse us. He's reaching to heal us emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. He's reaching for us. Amen. You got anything you want to add, brother? Anybody got anything? Uh, I got to get a drink. <laughs> I, uh, I'm actually... Deborah, I got that, by the way. Um, All right. Well, I'll move well, on if you're I, working on something. I, I am, but I, I do, do want to say something. You know, whenever... Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the video there... I, I loved that, that one part that he turns around to to the leper and he says, go tell the priest, you know, that, that touches you so much. And, and, and I, you know, the, the Hollywood effects, you know, it, it just, it, I, I loved it. But most of all, it, it, it makes you think that he's, he's telling him for one reason and one reason only. You know, it's not anything more than making sure that they understand this is not what your life is supposed to be. The, the, the uncleanliness is not what your life is supposed to be. You know, right. it, you know, I, I'm here to tell you that you have a different purpose in life. And, and, and that's the, the whole thing about what, what uh, pastor Philip and I was wanting to show this about tonight was, is, you know, sometimes that visual aid gives you a little bit more um, to see because you read the words and, and, and they give you one, one feeling, but whenever you see the words and they're acted out, that, that gives you another feeling. And I wanted to make sure and bring that out. But go show yourself. And, you know, I went through some of that. And and, and I know Donnie has went through some of that. And... and, and you think about it, your kids are going to go through some of this whenever they grow up, you know. Jesus is going to touch your lives. He's going to touch you and, and he's going to tell you, get up, show yourselves. Let everybody see what I am doing inside your lives. And and, and I wanted to make sure and bring that out because it it, it just meant a lot to me because of, of everything that, I've seen out of my life with my mom, my family, and, and all the people that we've seen in the hospitals, you know, just like Brother Mark, yeah. uh, just a testament of how his miracles is working throughout this, this day and age. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's just amazing. I'm, I'm going back to the touch. I'm, I'm hung up on it a little bit. But, you know, even when Jesus touched the leopard, he could not be polluted by the leprosy. He was God, God in flesh, God incarnate. And I like what one commentator says. He was because he could not be no more polluted by the uncleanliness than could a ray of light by passing through, a, an, a, through the atmosphere. And that's the key of it. And, and you know, there's a lot, there's, there's some symbolic things to this and in this passage of scripture. 
But I think it's important that we understand that if we'll ask God, the leper approached Jesus to ask him for a healing, but he, but he puts God's will above his own. Think about that. He says, you can if you will. If you will, if it's your will, God, you can do it. You know, Lord, basically, I really want to be healed, but more than that, I want your will to be accomplished, not mine. And, 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 and I think this sometimes <clears throat> we got to understand, and people say this all the time, and, and I know we talk about Every time you talk about healings, people say, well, my grandma died and my grandpa died. They weren't healed and the Lord didn't heal them. And we prayed and we fasted and we prayed and we fasted. And that's true. Sometimes that does happen. But God has a purpose in people's lives. What this thing shows us, this passage of scripture shows us the compassion of Christ, the healing power of Christ, and the cleansing power of Christ. And and I think it's with the leper. There's so much. I mean, you could you could you could go on about the the significance of some of this because of the uncleanliness and because of of what it caused. Even under the Mosaic law, when when he went back to the priest, he told him to go back to the priest. I think it's very important to throw in here. Uh, we we hear a lot of people say, "Well, we don't live under the law no more." Technically, we don't. But God, Jesus, the Bible says Jesus didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. At his moment in time, it was not for him to be recognized, if you will, of who he was. So he says, you go back to the priest and you do what ceremonially needs to be done. And he presents it to the priest. And, and Jerry, Jerry's right, we jumped into that a little bit. But we see that in a moment. As Christ touched him, as Christ healed him, as Christ cleansed him. And I, and I go back to it, man. I, I look at his reaction. Did you look at the disciples' reaction? <laughs> you know what? The disciple is the church to me. We're like, oh, yeah, God, I don't know if you can, God. You know, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe. You don't want to touch him. She's sick. You don't want to touch him. You might catch it. You don't want to touch her. But Jesus says, Jesus had such compassion. He said, no, wait a minute, boys. He didn't really say that. But he said, wait. That's your Billy language. He said, wait. He said, I got this. And he goes to him. And sometimes we as the church almost fail. And when these, when the healing takes place, then a light bulb goes off in those guys' minds. I'm sure you see the reaction and the joy in their cells to the point where he says, and, and this is not in the scripture, but he says, give him, a, give him a tunic. Somebody got an extra tunic. And more than likely, he probably would have had a tunic because he was to rent his clothes to prove that he was unclean in itself. So he was covering that up. And, and you go into that with blind Barnabas sometimes where he gives him a, a, a new coat, if you will, or a new tunic, if you will. And, uh, and, we, and we see that moment and he says, you go to the priest and you tell him and show the priest and offer, let's see what it says, and go show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according to what, as Moses commanded for the testimony unto them. And there was a ritual in that time. I started to read it. We have, what time is it? We got a little bit, don't we? Yeah, we We're got good. some time. I want to read this. It's in Leviticus. If you want to turn there, Ah, I lost it. Oh, here we are. Verse 14, chapter 2 through 32. I don't know if we'll read all that. Well, we may not read all that. That's a long passage of Scripture. But let's read the, uh, verses 12. We'll start with verse 2. It says, this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. When he's cleansed, he's to go back to the priest and he's to offer a, a sacrifice, if you will, or a thing to it. He said, he should be brought unto the priest and the priest shall go forth out of the camp. So he's not even allowed to come into the camp. And the priest shall look and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leopard, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them in, dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. He shall then, he shall sprinkle upon him that it is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. What a thought, what a thought. The mosaic offering was a pair of birds, one of which was killed over running water, while the other having been dipped into the mingling blood and water was free to fly away 
in its native air. Is not this the, uh, I like what this guy wrote, is not this the meat emblem of forgiving and cleansing soul? Good Lord, what a thought, amen? What a thought is that moment he had to go back and do that. The Lord knows what he's doing, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm hoping tonight has been informative. I'm hope we're, we're, I'm trying not to get too far astray. There's so much, there's so many things you can unpack out of this passage of scripture and see what, see what happens. But I think it's important that we see that Jesus says, hey, don't go tell nobody. It wasn't his time yet to be revealed. It wasn't his time for people to know that he was the Messiah yet. Though he was healing and though he was doing the work, it was time. Oh, Jerry Martin put, we welcome one and all. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> you got something? Go ahead. No, no, I'm still taking care of an issue. Oh. All right, good deal. Anybody got any comments, questions, suggestions out there? I hope it's I hope it's uh, been good. Uh, but I, I, we got to look at this sometimes and see what Christ can do and not do. Now, here's the thing: is it's an intriguing in itself, and we touched on it a little bit. I think sometimes let, let me back up for a minute. This guy come to Christ in humility. When we come to God to ask for miracles, we must also come to Him with absolute humility. And we must not assume for a moment that we deserve the miracle from God because of how good we are. <laughs> Some people do. Are you doing that? Okay. Some people feel like, well, because I'm this, it shouldn't happen to me. The leper came to Jesus and knelt before him, begging him because he knew. Here's the thing is, sometimes in our lives, we get to a point we know if God can't do it, then nobody can. That's right. And, and I think that's a key for us. Sometimes we get to a point where God can't do it, nobody can. And, 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 and we ought not to get to that point sometimes. There's things in our lives. I like to tell people this. If it's important to you, it's important to God. And sometimes we forget to bring things to God that God could take care of for us and God could help us with. And, and, and a miracle, let me say this about a miracle. If you can fix it, then it ain't a miracle. I don't know what else to say after that. <laughs> if you can fix it, then it ain't a miracle. But no, I'm just kidding. But I think we got to understand that sometimes. And and here's the thing is we've got to learn, and, and we do. I think most people do. But I, I talked about it earlier, and it leads back to our worship. And we should give God a mir- glory to God when He does a miracle. And Jesus orders him not to tell anybody. He said, "Go you go away, show yourself to the priests, offer the sacrifices that you're supposed to." For the cleansed leper to show himself to the priest was essential. One reason I often suggests. For that, this Jesus wanted to observe the rituals prescribed in Leviticus. And we read some of Leviticus as a requirement of a healed person to perform sacrifices to show his gratitude towards God that he had been healed. That means that when Jesus does a work in your life, he expects you to show your gratitude. I, I think that, and here's, I go back to it. If you've been saved, there's no greater miracle. And, and sometimes we come in, and we, I'm saying we, we come in on Sunday morning and Sunday night worship, and it's almost like you can't get nobody, nobody's there in itself in worship. And you know what I mean? They're sitting there twiddling their thumbs, they're on their phone, they're looking around, they're just half-heartedly doing it. But if we understand and we come into the house of God and understand that he saved my soul, he cleansed me. I ought to worship him every chance I get. He cleansed me. He pulled me up out of the miry clay. I ought to come in with lifted up hands. I ought to come in with a shout. I ought to come in with a clap offering. I said it earlier, a lot of times we have to prompt people, seems like, or or lead, and, we, and, our, and our praise team is to lead us into worship. But the thing about it is, I told somebody the other day, and I've shared this a lot lately about worship, is that God's not really, a, hey, we're froze. I'm froze right there. Boom, that's a good shot. God's not really, a, it's not the song that moves him. It's, it's not how singer. great the lyrics is. It's the singer. And the singer is you, not the people on the stage, which they do. They God does move for them. But it's you that sings. That's what moves him into your life. And that's what moves him into your situation. And we ought not to have to be prompted in a sense to wholeheartedly worship God because we've been born again. We've been bought by the blood. Even though it's a hard time, and we may be going through a hard time in our life, but I'm telling you, you saw the little video clip. Maybe we can show it at the end, maybe. Because some people jumped on later. You think we can? What's, which one? That video we just showed. Yeah? Yeah. Because some people jumped in on late. We may end up with that video a little bit and say a few other things. Because some people come in a little late and may have missed the video. The video is powerful. It's good to watch again. I don't know how many times I've watched it. But you see the reaction of the hum- human side of it. 
And uh, so I, I think it's so important that we understand that we have to learn to give God glory for what he's done for us. And, and, and most of the time, if, he, if we really think about it, it's not hard to do. When I think about what he's done for me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to dance. I want to run. I want to shout. When I think about the things he's done for me, I can't help but praise him. And don't get me wrong. I've had some hard things in my life. I've had some terrible things in my life that I can't got questions for or got explanations for. I got questions for. But the fact of the matter is he still saved my soul. And one day I'm leaving this old dreaded world, if you will, and I'm going into eternity because of him. And he deserves my worship. He deserves my worship. Say it again. He deserves my worship. He deserves your worship. But my here's, worship a, too. <laughs> here's an interesting key about the old boy. He tells him, he said, now don't you do it. Now Luke says this, but so much the more were there a fame abroad of him. He's talking about Christ. And great multitudes came together to hear him and to be healed by him and their infirmities. And he withdrew himself to the wilderness and prayed. Mark's gospel says this. He's talking about the guy. He said, but he went out and began to publish it much. <laughs> he didn't listen, I guess, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in a desert place, and they came to him from every quarter. I thought about that. He was telling the glory of God. Amen, Donnie. All glory goes to God. He was, uh, he was telling, he, he, was, he was instructed to go to the priest, and hopefully he did, but I'm sure people who knew him saw him. Could you imagine going to your family again for the first time? And they're going to say, what happened to you? And what are you going to tell them? Yeah. I met a man. I'm going to get his t-shirt made up. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my Jesus. We ought to have it all about on our minds all the time. Let me tell you about it. I met a man. He, could you not see him? I mean, that's, it's not in the Bible, but just, could you not see him? So let me tell you. you, you got to know. Think about those who saw I'm sure they said, hey, you should have seen that, man. He touched that guy, spoke to him in the leprosy. They'd never seen nothing like that before. Leprosy was usually a death sentence unless it somehow progressively your body fought it off. I guess sometimes they could be cleansed from it in a natural sense or you wouldn't have the opportunity of the cleansing of the priest. But I'm just, it's a great miracle. And that miracle, here's if you get any key significance out of this miracle, God has compassion on you. God loves you and God cares about you. And no matter how long you've done it with things, whether it's new, or old, or been there forever, there's still hope in God. And don't ever hesitate to take it to God. Because God can. If his will is you be healed, you'll be healed tomorrow. You'll be healed today. That's right. You can be healed this very moment. And God has compassion and love for us so much. He shows it in this little miracle as he wretched and touched that man who had been rejected. Amen. You got anything you want to add? No, I'm just, I, I'm still just reeling in, in, in this because it, it just, it brings to light so many things that, that I've seen and, and went through. You know, just, just knowing the touch that he has and what he can do in our lives. You know, I, I've, I've seen people walk and, and seen people talk again that's been silent for 10 years. And it's just, if, if you can't be touched by what, what, you know, Jesus can do for you, you know, all I can say is you need to wake up. Uh, he's, he's a miracle working son of, of of the father as I, I just get emotional knowing that that he's what he's done for me and uh, you know i've seen what he's done for so many people just thinking about the the lepers that that he went i mean it was a crowd of them and this other other yeah he has 10 lepers home. later on yeah you know and he just doesn't quit, uh, and and it just it just brings you to the point of, of your life where you sit and you think about what what he loved about us, and he could have done so much, and he decided to 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 die for us. It just it breaks your heart thinking that that we turn around and, and we don't even give him half of what he deserves. Right. 
Sister Deborah says, uh, can you click on that? Yeah, I can. I'll let you click on it first because every time he clicks on it, it moves it and you can't read it. <laughs> you want to read it? Deborah says, Amen. God inhabits our praises. We all should have focus on Jesus. When people are not worshiping God and honoring his presence, people who are not lost are watching you. We <clears throat> we come together to offer up praise, not play on our phones, side chat the whole service, display public affection is not a dating place, Peyton place, or a game place. It's a place where we behold his glory. Ooh. You said it well. Amen. <laughs> I can't add to that. You I, said it well. I think it's about time for her to get behind the pulpit a little bit there and preach on that. Should have hacked while you was in there, sister, in the middle of it. Put hack, hack, hack. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. You're right. We come in sometimes into the house of God and with a lot of different things on our mind and a lot of different agendas. And sometimes I think we come into worship and we come into fellowship. Don't get me wrong, but there's a place and time for everything. And I think that's the key. And um, so I think you're right. It's not a place for that. It's a place to, to, to honor God. It's a place to worship God. It's a place to lift up God. Amen. Donnie says, there's no songs. I've got so much to praise him, praise him for so much to thank him for. Amen. <laughs> Hack, hold my ear, hack. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, that's good. That's good, sister. But it is. Hey, and, and, and here's the thing, and, and I, I, we're going to show this video again. We may, we'll let it play, and then we'll say a few things at the end, But because some people are just getting on board. And if you are watching, it's from the Chosen series. It's an app you can download. Uh, it's You can watch these things for free. They do take donations. They are crowdfunded. If you know what that means is, is donations come in and they produce these series. They've got two seasons already. Yeah, there's and a third that was promised. I don't know I don't where. know if it's come out yet or if it's, I mean, COVID could have messed that up too. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I did hear uh, a couple of days ago that someone passed away during the filming of, of one of them. It could have had something to do with yeah. it, yeah. So, but anyway, you go watch it. I mean, I mean, they're Hollywood, you know what I mean? But they, you know, you just have to make your own judgment. I like them because it pulls out the human side of things. Uh, but they, they are not like big budget. They, and it makes it more interesting. It, it makes it feel like that it, that they are telling you a real story. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they fill in some gaps. They Hollywood yeah. some gaps up. Yeah. And you have to because the Bible doesn't tell everything. But... Anyway, it's a neat little show, and this is a neat video, I think. If you get ready, we'll show it here in a little bit. It's a neat video because it shows, you just got to see it. Some of you just watched it at the first, and I think Deborah hit it right. It's just powerful in itself. And this is Jesus cleansing the leper in Mark chapter 1, Matthew chapter 8, and Luke chapter 5. These all tell the same story in, the, or in and out through the same Gospels. And uh, anything you want to add before we show it? Um, other than just... You know, if, if you have an opportunity, uh, you know, let these folks know that you enjoyed it. Uh, that That's the main thing because we we did not, uh, you know, go through the right channels and say, hey, can we use it? They, they are a, a free funding uh, place and, and they put all their stuff on YouTube. They they want the people to, to have the these. Yeah. Uh, they, right. They're just wanting to get the word, word out. They, they want the gospel out there. Uh, and... And everything that they do is all about uh, the father's business. Uh, just if you can, uh, drop them a line. They've got uh, everything on YouTube. They've got everything on uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, there's a couple of other uh, social medias that I'm not on that, that they do have this on. Uh, and I was turned on to it by uh, Pastor Philip. And I was kind of reluctant about watching it. But once I started watching it, I, I started... Uh, catching up to him and, and and it's a really good program and, and it's very informative uh, and this is something that you can also you know we're always uh, harping on getting the television out of your house and getting on programming that is uh, family centric this is one of those shows that you can actually watch with your children this is one of those shows that you can watch with your kids and and say hey this is this is bible backed 
and, and be and you can feel good about watching something and and having uh, something to do uh, with your kids uh, once or twice a week and having uh, family time uh, and I, I really think that this, and here's you something else. So we, we were talking about this not too long ago, if you don't mind me put, putting this in there. You know, we, we I don't have know what been, you're going to put in there, but go ahead. Uh, <laughs> he said have, he didn't tell it. I, we're ahead, we're talking ahead. about time, okay? Okay, go ahead. Uh, we have been talking about uh, some, some more uh, uh, little groups getting started uh, throughout the... Yeah, life groups uh, getting started throughout the uh, the summer and uh, the coming fall. Uh, if you wanted to start a uh, watch parties and things like this, I used to do this with the kids that I was o- over, uh, and and we would actually get online and watch shows and comment and, and have little Bible studies and things and talk about stuff like this. And this is something that you can do with your teens and they can actually have good Bible studies with uh, these Bible-centric uh, movies, and they could have good discussions. And, and I just want to put this out there That's for them. That's a good deal. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. So anyway, I've got this ready, and uh, I'm going to get it started here. And We're uh, going to show it, and then we'll close out. Yep. Yeah. We'll yep. talk a little bit after, so don't leave us. So I'm, I'm going to get it started, and uh, we will not talk through this uh, this time, so you, you can be quiet over there. <laughs> He's a funny man. Yeah, I am funny. Just funny looking. <laughs> it's a leper. Stay back. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his air. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. Rabbi, 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 you cannot Rabbi, his disease. You. Please. Please don't turn away from me. I won't. Lord, if you are willing, if you can make me clean, only if you want to, I submit to you. My sister, she was a servant at the wedding. She told me what you could do. I know you can heal me if you are willing. Who has an extra tunic? Just one of you, just one of you. That's enough. Green 
is definitely your color. Oh. <laughs> Not too shabby. <laughs> As you can see there, it's uh, Kingdom Citizens, uh, which has put this out. Uh, we, we appreciate them very much. But anyway, thank you, uh, everybody, for watching this. And uh, it's, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't watch movies, hardly any movies at all. But uh, if it is a movie that I watch, I try to watch uh, uh, something that is Bible-based or, or at least uh, something that's got... Uh, 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 a Christian uh, content. content uh, I, I just I threw all that stuff away out of my life uh, years ago, and and I really think that this is something good that you can uh, get behind, especially. It's uh, a lot cleaner than anything yeah. else you want. So. Uh, this is something that you can uh, uh, really get behind and have. Uh, some fun with your your family and and enjoy it and and plus uh, you know study the Bible with it. Uh, what we like to do and you know whenever we're studying it with uh, my groups is uh, to get the Bible out and pause it every once in a while and and, and uh, highlight it. Uh, it's really nice to uh, to make sure that you, whatever it is that you're watching uh, to you know maybe write some. Uh, uh, some trivia questions down if you're doing it with a group or something and, and this is really really great to do uh, so make sure that you uh to, you know make make some fun with it with your family amen brother bobby says he also heard the word from his sister he heard the word and he acted on the word amen 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 that's why it's so important to tell people about jesus tell them what he's done for you come on you can't stress that enough in your life and 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 how important, and tell them what you've seen. Tell them about your church. Come on, brag on your church. Because if you're running down your church that you attend, then they ain't coming where you attend. That's right. I, I don't mean, if you don't like your church, go somewhere else. Did I say that out loud? I think you said it just fine. But if you do, then tell people about it. Don't don't talk how bad the preacher was. Don't talk how bad the, the pastor's been. Don't talk how bad the music. What, what If you like your church, invite people to. Don't talk about it. If you're coming, invite them to your church and tell them how great it is and how wonderful it is because now they're going to come to the house. And now they're going to be able to hear the word. I like what you said, Brother Bobby. They heard the word and he acted upon the word. It's upon sometimes our own testimonies. The Bible says we're overcomer by the blood of the lamb and our testimonies. Amen. Mr. Johnson says, awesome job. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Bobby Couch, I don't know about you anymore. Roll Leave tide. that fellow alone. Roll Tide. Yeah, say something. I ain't saying a word. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope this has been informative. hope it's been a good study tonight. I hope you've enjoyed uh, everything that, that we throwed up there with the videos. and We haven't really done that often. It's the first time we just happened to look at it today, and I really forgot about them. But um, they have, that's a good little I thing. came up with it. He did. He found it and come up with it. And uh, so it's good. Deborah says, Pastor TH really preached an awesome message Sunday night. If you didn't feel convicted or moved, how many people have we led to Jesus this year? That hit me hard. Amen. Hey, let, let's, let's just stay here. I know we run out of time, but here's the point is, if you're born again, saint of God, you ought to be spread. I like what this guy did. He said he went abroad. He spread it ablaze, I think the word said. I mean, we ought to be telling people about Jesus. How many people, what are you doing up there? I didn't see you doing all that mess with your arms. But anyhow, <laughs> if y'all don't know it, we're looking at a screen that shows us the live feed and we can see ourselves and see the uh, comments on it. But 
saved us from constantly looking at that computer. We can look towards you and towards the camera, but uh, I just noticed his movement with his, showing his, I don't know what he was doing there. But anyway. Well, you talk to them. I... <laughs> and that's a good point. How many people have you led to Jesus this year? Pastor Channel is just in January to, to invite at least 22 people in the year 2022. Have you got your 22? Mount Vale, have you got your 22? A lot of people surpassed that already. We really should have challenged you to 365. It's 365 days a year. You at least could invite one person every day just about. But we gave you a small amount, 22. Get them into the house of the Lord. Invite them. I got to tell this. Tell it. Brother Joe, if you know him, he he's uh, my roommate. He He's uh, a guy that uh, he's real quiet, right? Mm-hmm. He's... He, Whenever he first came here, he had had trouble just talking to to just about anybody. Mm-hmm. And we had a function coming up, and he was so excited about the this this thing that we was doing. I, I think it was the chili cook off or something. I I forget what it was, but he was so excited about this, and he was excited about the twenty two and twenty two so much. We were going to be late getting over here. We were coming out of Walmart, and he told me, he says, hold on, just hold on. Joe, we got to go. Hold on, hold on. The guy sitting next to us in Walmart parking lot had his window down. Joe never walks up to anybody to just strike up a conversation. Hey, sir, hey, how are you? Started talking to him. Where do you go to church? Hey, we're having and just out laid of the it, book, out, there, laid it <laughs> out there. And he did that the whole day. There you go. It's more important for him to make sure he gets somebody to come to church than it ever was about him being shy, about him being, you know, drawn into himself. Right. But because Pastor laid it out there for him to make sure he draws people into the church, that was more important. Amen. And, and if that man who, who just turned 76, if that man that, that has been living that way for 70 something years can come out of his shell and start inviting somebody, so can the rest of us. So can the rest of us. <laughs> there you go. So can the rest of us. Good deal. Hey, that ought, to, that ought to strike something in us. Amen. It ought to stir something. Amen. That's right. Anything else? Don't forget uh, Wednesday night service. Don't forget Tuesday nights life groups that are going on. Uh, Thursday night life group. Friday night life groups. We got them all going on. That's uh, right. A lot of them are virtual. Some of them are in person. And don't forget Sunday services. I think that's it. Come expecting. Come expecting God to do something. That's right. Amen. You got anything else? No, I'm just ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready, ready. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all. We love you. Can't wait to see you again. Come expecting and come and bring somebody with you. Amen. Amen.